Since my last video, a lot of you have requested a low budget Google ad strategy for 2023. And that is exactly what today's video is gonna entail. I'm gonna be showing you what I would do if I had a brand new Google ads account. And when I say low budget, I mean anywhere from sort of 20 to $50 a day. I wouldn't say with Google ads, anything less than $20 a day really isn't worth using. So make sure you have a minimum budget of $20 a day. Just before we jump into the strategy, I will leave a link below to my Google ads agency website. So if you are interested in working with us, please fill out the form that's on the homepage of the website. We do only work with a limited number of clients and there is about two or three available spots to work with us at the moment. So if you are interested, fill out the form and we'll get back to you as quickly as possible. Now, a couple of things I wanna quickly run through before we even talk about the Google ad side of things because there are a few things you need to do that are massively gonna help you succeed with Google. The first one being conversion tracking. I'm not gonna to touch on this too much because I feel like I mentioned it in every single video but you must make sure your google conversion tracking is set up correctly because if it isn't you really shouldn't be spending a penny on google ads if you have got it set up and you think it might not be tracking 100 percent correctly you need to take a look at it and you need to fix it it is very complicated i personally use a developer on fiverr he's worked with me for a couple of years now he's done my own businesses he helps with my clients as well so i'll leave a link to his fiverr profile in the description drop him a message he will fix any conversion tracking issues or install it completely from scratch if you need to you'll do it very quickly it's a link in the description for that now next up is going to be optimizing your product feed now a few ways you can do this and this is essential to making your product appeal to the majority of people when they are side by side next to your competitors within the shopping network this could be things like using high quality images strategic pricing now with google shopping you don't need to be the cheapest to have results and see success for me personally my own businesses I actually price my products more on the premium level and that is because they're presented nicely with really good images the quality is really good and probably is superior to my competition but overall if you present your product really well and professionally on your product page then people are going to be willing to pay that higher price and another thing I want to talk about is the SEO title and description for your products this is essentially the title and description that Google take and use the keywords from to make sure your items are you know it's shown in front of the correct people under the correct search terms so a great example here this is a drop shipping site no idea who owns it i've just searched dog bed and you can see the title of this product isn't just you know dog bed you can see it's official calming donut dog bed uk anti-anxiety bed and then obviously the dark gray color and size obviously there are quite a few keywords just in this title alone now you can't see the seo descriptions from the shopping feed uh, shopping results here but there will be 320 characters or less of high quality description behind this which will include a variety of keywords now the way you edit this you can either do it through your google shopping feed app i use the uh, google shopping feed by Simprosis. you can now edit your title and description within google merchant center but the best way i like to do it because it also benefits you organically is doing it directly from the shopify product editor you can see an example here on one of my stores all you need to do scroll down to the bottom and put in your title and description here this isn't the title and description people see when they are on your product page it is the title and description google use to rank your pages and your products so make sure you are using as many keywords related to your product as possible in the title and the description the description is very important as well i've seen clients that we've taken on and they've actually either not done this at all or they just leave the description blank the description is huge because you only get 70 characters in the title but you get up to 320 in the description which is a lot and gives you a good opportunity to put as many keywords related to your product in this section here and once you've done all of this just make sure it has synced correctly to merchant center and that's where you'll see your product title like this you can see a variety of other websites have done it this again is a very good example you can see they've just got a load of bullet pointed keywords it's not again just dog bed they've done calming dog bed anti-anxiety orthopedic fluffy you know stress relief things like that so that is why this particular product is ranking high highly in all of these two is because they are including a variety of keywords in their titles and descriptions. 
options. Now, whilst we are on the subject of dog beds and just good looking products in general, this right here is a great example of a good landing page. You can see it's very simple, it's clean, and you know, it's straight to the point. The price is very clear. You know, they've got a sale on, they've got a decent offer. They've got their key selling factor here, the fact it makes your pets happy and healthy and keeps them calm. You know, social proof with the reviews up here. You've got trust badges, you've got the size chart, which is really good for a product like this. You can see they've put dog breeds matching up to the size, which will answer a lot of people's questions. Again, you've got social proof here, whether or not they have been seen on BBC and Daily Mirror and things like that, but it still looks good. You've got a very well structured description with a variety of images, logos, badges, and this is another very good thing here. They've got a table here that shows you the benefits of their product compared to the competition. And obviously you saw on that Google search earlier, there are other people selling the exact same products, but they're telling you here that theirs is better because their product has all of these features, whereas the competition don't. And this is another way you can justify selling your product for a higher price than your competition. And finally, right at the bottom, you've obviously got the customer reviews. So I do get a lot of people come to me on Twitter and Instagram, you know, take a look on my website, I do, and it really just doesn't look great. I know it's brutal, but a lot of people expect results when their sites look like absolute rubbish. So just take some time, make your site look good. This again is a great example of what a good product page should look like. And I guarantee this business right here is making a good amount of money, you know, just on this product alone. And I'm sure they are with other products as well. Now the actual Google ad strategy is pretty straightforward, not too long winded. So I'm just going to get to the point. Once you've done the things I've previously mentioned making your site look good do the SEO titles and things like that you'll obviously be wanting to run your Google Ads so bare minimum 20 25 dollars a day is what I recommend if you can afford 50 75 100 a day even better go ahead and do that because you'll be able to collect and gather data quicker and you know you'll get out of that learning phase a lot quicker and be able to scale sooner now all you want to do is go with a standard shopping campaign do not think about Pmax yet I would include all of your products in the singular campaign go with a manual CP and make sure you're not using enhanced CPC. Something that's never really worked for me is enhanced CPC. You can split test it, you can try it somewhere down the line, but just starting out, it's not something I use because it will drive your cost per click up on most occasions. Now, taking that dog site again, for example, if you're running a niche store like that, you don't need to segment your products into different ad groups because they're all pretty much part of the same category and the same niche. But if you're going into this with a general store, and you know, if you're selling um, homeware, you might want to segment segment your kitchen products into an ad group. You might want to segment your bedroom products into another ad group, just so it's easier to manage the search terms, keywords, bids, data, and things like that. So do bear that in mind, whether or not you've got a niche or general store. And once you've created your campaign, you'll be able to select the maximum cost per click bid for each of your products. Like I said, this is quite a simple, straightforward method. I have got another video on my channel that breaks this method down in a lot more detail. I actually go through the creation process. So I think it's actually the video before this one so if you want that more detailed guide on how to set up correctly your standard shopping campaign make sure you go ahead and watch that now you might wonder what you need to set your maximum cost per click as for each product all I personally do I do this again for my own businesses my clients as well go ahead and use the Google keyword planner you can see we're using dog bed again in this example I've just searched that in and you can see it gives you a range of pricing here for low bid high bid and when you're just starting out out to make sure it doesn't completely eat through your budget entirely and get you very few clicks I always bid two three four P or pennies or cents above the low range bid here so for example if I was selling this dog bed and I'm setting the maximum cost per click I would set this at about 0.23 or 0.24 yes over time you'll gradually start to scale this up you know you might increase it one week then you might have to bring it down the next week you'll eventually find that sweet spot that will be generating you a you know good quality traffic a nice number of conversions and obviously a profitable ROAS as well now you may get one or two products in your campaign that are just spending the majority of the budget and that can't be helped sometimes you may need to segment them into their own campaigns if they're profitable if they're not profitable but are still eating up your entire budget then just drop that maximum cost per click down bid by quite a bit your other products a chance but if you have got a product that's just dominating in terms of spend conversions and over overall profitability there's no reason why you can't take it out of this standard shopping campaign and even put it into its own standard shopping campaign with higher bids or just put it directly into a performance max campaign something I personally prefer to 
to use when scaling is Pmax, but I would say you need at least a hundred pound a day in ad spend for a Pmax campaign to be beneficial to your business and Google ad account. Now, once your campaign is up and running every two to three days, you'll want to go ahead and just look through your search terms that, you know, what search terms are people clicking on and whether or not they're performing well, whether or not they're completely irrelevant, because in the early stages, Google will be putting your products in front of some really random search terms. It always happens. So you just want to monitor that and add as many negative keywords or search terms to your negative keyword list as possible. Anything that's overspending and not getting conversions or any irrelevant terms. And eventually over time, you will begin to grow your negative keyword list. And that essentially, the bigger that gets, the more optimized your campaign will be over time. So this method is pretty straightforward. If you want an actual step-by-step -step walkthrough on me making a campaign like this, just watch the video before this one on my channel. I'll leave a link to my Fiverr developer below. If you do need your conversion tracking setting up or fixing, I'll also leave a link below to my Google Ads agency. Just fill out that form if you wish to work with us. But other than that, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.